Welcome to another episode of Why I Like These Books. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing Emma Klein's The Girls. One of my New Year's resolutions was to read more works, books, novels, etc., by women authors. Women are underrepresented in the literary canon in a macrocosmic sense, and in a microcosmic uh, sense, they are underrepresented in my reading habits, and that's a tragedy, a travesty, and I'm gonna work to undo that. So I'd like to begin this review with a word of warning. The Girls by Emma Klein has mature content. This review, however, is not going to have mature content. It's going to be really, really G-rated. Um, although, probably uh, the verbiage is gonna be a little high level and confusing. And you might think that I'm being pretentious by using such big words, but I promise I'm not really trying to. It's just who I am. So let's start with the style of writing. I enjoyed uh, Klein's style immensely. Klein is clever about sneaking in the poetic language into her writing in a way that she does not bog the reader down with extra words or extra language that doesn't need to be there, AKA superfluous, superfluous language. She often substitutes a more alive uh, verb for a boring one. So uh, for instance, scud instead of drift or mossed instead of covered. And this repeated replacement is a delight and sort of um, a shock, a surprise, but a pleasant one. Next, I thought the theme of the work was ambitious and necessary. It is as much a condemnation of the way that girls, in an effort to have their worth validated by other girls, betray other girls, allowing them to futilely kick in the swallowing waters of the male gaze, as it is an eloquent rebuttal of pure heteronormative love, especially that form of partnership that elevates one partner to position of power and expects of the other partner nothing but silent acquiescence. Convinced they are free, or in the act of becoming free, the girls are blind to their subjugation, and through this act of willful ignorance, paradoxically made complicit in their enslavement. In their defense, the forces they are up against are powerful, unjust, societal currents that few escape from. Desire is the driving force of this book, but it is not treated as a monolithic, easily defined quantity. Rather, desire is seen as a complex and contradictory motivation. The girls desire male attention and feel strangled by it. Evie's mother desires a husband, but keeps bringing home losers. The men in the novel desire women first and foremost, but desire their bodies just as the symbol of bodies, which is to say they value their utility in lessening an insatiable hunger within them and little else. To conclude with, I think uh, Klein is admirable because she is so young, uh, only in her late uh, 20s at the time of writing this novel, and so willing to address thorny issues through the lens of uh, fiction. This is the type of uh, book that allows us to imagine with a sort of uh, voyeuristic thrill and horror what it might have been like to be a teenage girl in love with a charismatic cult leader. It seeks to justify the actions of girls by showing how they were influenced by the zeitgeist of late 1960s, and it doesn't pull the punches, which I think is refreshing. So that was my review of Emma Klein's The Girls. Uh, I don't know if that inspired you to read it or not. Perhaps it turned you off entirely to the idea of reading any other book in the future, uh, ever. And I hope that that's not the case. But if that's not the case, and it, on the contrary, conversely, inspired you to read more broadly, diversely, uh, then I have achieved my goal and I wish you happy reading. Until next time, this has been Wiltaba, why I like these books.